Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at SoFly's Storm. This is an add-on available in the marketplace for $13 and it is all about hurricanes. So it is all about challenges in terms of controlling your plane basically. Uh, though you, if you're a hurricane enthusiast this will give you a lot of things. Uh, it has presets, storms, landing challenges, and discovery flights. The storms, uh, some of them are historical storms that you can explore I guess. But it is all within the limitations of the sim. So the storms, you know, you saw the image up above, but um, they're not as like disorganized as regular storms might be. Uh, they're very sort of organized systems. And so, you know, in real life, hurricanes can be sort of transitional sometimes. These aren't quite that, but um, we are going to take a look at what it adds. I have tried some of the missions in a live stream and I tried some of the landing challenges and some of them were challenging. Actually, they were all challenging. The way they're scored uh, could do some work considering how challenging they are actually, but we'll get to that. Uh, but it says its features are a large number of hurricanes, historical and fictional, uh, global storm presets that present a challenge anywhere in the world, fully voiced story-driven missions, educational airliner flights into the eye of the storm. I don't know why. The problem is, okay, so the biggest problem we have is we don't have a P-3 Orion or the normal Hurricane Hunter planes, right? The P-3 Orion is a classic. There are others that could be used. Uh, basically, you want a four propeller engine plane. Uh, those are the classic ones. So actually, we could probably turn the DC-6 from PMDG into a good Hurricane Hunter. Uh, but anyway, uh, these are not those. But you could fly, if you do get another plane, you could fly it using the global storm presets and take a look at the hurricane from there instead of using one of the challenges of discovery flights. Uh, all new discovery flights and authentic video audio tour. I have not done that. And I, I, I'll save that for another video if I try one of those uh, because that's content from them. And I, you know, then I'll be playing their audio and I'll have to think about that. Um, so, uh, tough and thrilling landing challenges, we will look at those, flight plans, and detailed PDF guide. Alright, so, as far as the global presets are concerned, uh, in the world map, one thing it adds is, when you take a look at flight conditions, we have these presets here, and we have the usual live weather, storm, soaring, we've got some storing, soaring stuff, presumably, uh, because I have the kinetic assistant plugin, but then we have all these hurricanes and actually quite a lot of them uh, So and then it also indicates what um, Airport you're gonna be uh, you might want to be at uh, based on that particular storm and Unfortunately, it doesn't uh, seem to have the date set so you'd have to find a date for that But it does tell you what year they're in so hurricane Felix Florence uh, all sorts of, I guess these are the retired storms, perhaps. Uh, Ivan, very famous, of course. Uh, Katrina, very famous. Uh, so, but to what extent they're modeling the storms, of course, again, within the limitations of the sim. Somebody had asked me whether they have tornadoes. No, this is all hurricanes. Uh, so keeping that in mind. And there's some fictional ones that are sort of questionable because the fictional ones, like, in Portland? Really? Uh, what are you thinking is happening to global warming here where you have a hurricane in Portland? Um, they're in uh, locations where maybe we shouldn't have hurricanes. So yeah, but but there is also a uh, freezing blizzard. Um, yeah, and hailstorm, torrential rain. There's some other uh, things here that might be interesting. And not all of the landing challenges are just hurricane landing challenges. So let's take a look at where it adds stuff. If you get it, you'll have to restart the game in order to see these popping up, of course. Um, and they're not going to pop up in Discovery Flights or anything like that. They're all under um, Custom. So they are all down here. Custom Content. And we've got Storm 1 Introduction. So Introduction about Hurricanes. This is the audio stuff that they were talking about. And then we have got a bunch of landing challenges. Now I tried these. They don't put the little A, B, C on it, you know, for your score. And it seems like when it gives you the score, it's just like one score for all of them. It doesn't uh, keep, I mean, uh, not 
what I mean is that the max score is sort of shared. It'll give you a score for each one at the end, but you'll have to basically keep track of it on your own. In other words, uh, it's not gonna uh, keep that score in mind for that particular challenge, let me put it that way. And then these are educational airliner flights, but uh, well, that's that's only if you want educational airliner flights. I'm not really going to be into that. Uh, some of these other ones down here look interesting. Uh, into the eye with a Cessna caravan is a serious plane to go in, uh, into a hurricane with. Um, find the storm fast in an F-18. Day after tomorrow, vital supply run. I don't know what plane that's in. Uh, I guess we could take a look. Uh, it looks like it's a TBM. 9.30. Okay, so a supply run in there. And uh, the last one was Breezy Blast Off Antigua. And that's 747. I like that. Uh, 747 for the Bermuda one as well. Okay, so uh, with all that being said, uh, there's also this uh, discovery mission with the FA-18 relaxing flight over a hurricane. I mean, do we need something relaxing over a hurricane? But not all these are hurricane. Like the supercell is not a hurricane, thankfully, because it's Sacramento. Um, we'll we'll try this one. I tried this during the stream, and I want to get a better score on it. So let's go. Okay, so here we go. So there's the first landing challenge I tried during the live stream. I wasn't particularly impressed with this one. Uh, it's more like a warming up thing. Uh, basically, we've got a huge cloud there, but ultimately it doesn't hurt visibility. We've got the map here, and so that helps too. We just have to turn left. So yep, the airport's quite visible on our map. And we can see it now. Runway lights. There's just enough wind to aggravate a little bit. Okay. 100, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard. Well, I just saw blur birds there. Five. Oh, we touched down. I just saw birds. I do have the birds pack for the West Coast from FS Birds. Was it FS Birds? Anyway, I rarely see them though. Suddenly they pop up out of nowhere. I wasn't entirely satisfied with that pack because I barely saw them. Anyway, so you can see it gives us a B, 725,000, but you're gonna have to jot down the score because you won't find it anywhere else. The best score isn't from this flight in particular, it's from all 10 of the ones that come with this package as a group. So that best score isn't going to reflect the best score on this particular one. So anyway, that was a B. Um, and it gives you the usual stuff, but uh, the B doesn't take into consideration whether there's any difficulty. This wasn't that difficult. I just didn't do it particularly well, uh, so uh, a little bit hard on the landing smoothness. But yeah, and a little bit side to side. Okay, next up, a little bit more fun. Engine failure in a storm arriving at Gatwick. And so we have a right hand turn it is the left engine that fails now this one is substantially harder um, part of it is just the wind you can see on the dial there uh, gusting between 40 and 60 knots and we have a pretty variable velocity because of the gust and of course the engines gonna die so it's a lot of factors there Very much harder than the previous one. And there goes the left engine. But again, with the fly-by-wire, it uh, really trims out pretty well after the loss of the engine, so... The lightning needs some work. Sometimes I see it like as if it's inside the cockpit, which is weird. So our uh, situation is like this. And we'll start turning. Wow, that's uh, quite a flash, though. All right. 
But yeah, the wobbliness in this situation is pretty substantial. This is not me shaking it around. We're we're oscillating quite a lot there. Whoa. Okay, but we do need to turn right. A little bit early on the turn, but then we've got this wind to deal with. Uh, but we can see Gatwick over there pretty clearly. So that part's not a problem. The 40 to 60 knot wind that's going to push us a little bit back and... Well, the back part is not a problem. But the fact that it's pushing us a little bit to the right side is... Okay, well, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. Okay, well, I'm down. Okay. Well, we'll see what score it gives me. But again, it doesn't really adjust for how difficult the darn thing is. All right. It was a C. It, it was close to a B. B's 600,000. 570,000. All right. All right. Yeah, a little bit hard and far and actually not that far. It could have been much worse, but we were definitely off to the side a bit. I don't want to belabor the landing challenges, so I'm going to present two that I did during the live stream using the live stream video and quickly go through it using a voiceover. And so here is the PC-6 Turbo Porter in Alaska. And as you can see, this gets jostled quite a lot. Of course, it is a fairly low speed aircraft. A uh, big wing uh, gets pushed around and it was a very frustrating approach as you can tell and very often I heard the stall warning because the gusts were such that our speed was intensely variable. Here is the approach to the runway. I was obviously very high. It wasn't very hard to navigate to the runway. It's right along the river so that's not a big deal but yeah fighting the wind was I mean it was fun that that was difficult and yeah it really when it comes down to the runway it really depends on what part of the gusts you're in uh, whether you get a good score or not so I don't know if scoring these things I, I like the score I mean of course and I'm sure people who are more skilled will get better scores but yeah <laughs> yeah it's tough some of it is very variable. Eek. And here I went a little bit too far, as you can see. But we were already high to begin with. Alright, but what score does that give me? And it is a C, 394,000. So, yep, there you have it. I didn't really uh, stick around on the screen that explains why I got that score. Because, well... I, actually, the landing smooth of this was very nice. Only 122 feet per minute, but of course it is a PC-6 turbo porter, so it's not going to land very hard. But, uh, yeah, just way off of everything. So, next one that I did very quickly was this return to base one, uh, which actually has you plunging into a hurricane with the F-18. We're starting high up and actually really slow, weirdly slow. And then we have to descend all the way down in order to get to our base. And it's in the Tampa Bay area. And I actually overshot a bit, so I uh, took a loop around. This is part of the loop that I'm taking to get a little bit lower before approaching the runway. And after I do that, you can see it is uh, gusting a fair amount here. And the wind speeds, we couldn't really see it on that map. I should have brought up the other map that I have that does have the information for the wind, but. Yeah, it felt fairly substantial. And then as we get lower, of course, in this case, we actually have a visibility problem because of our approach, but uh, it clears up well enough before we actually need to 
get to the runway and the VFR map helps as far as I also the F-18 does have the map down below if I wanted to look down that would help too and yeah I'm trying to adjust it is knocking me out quite a lot here and there the landing speed for the F-18 in flight sim is way lower than in say DCS world but I'm putting it to the limit here occasionally here the stall speed warning and uh, well I mean I touched down pretty close to the blue marker that was probably fairly rough and well I got a B on that one and so now I'll go back to the live commentary for the last lighting challenge and then after that we'll do a free flight using one of the presets Okay, last but not least, as far as the landing challenges, I'm going to try the Category 5 into Barbados we have here. It says it is highly unrealistic. Well, it says un in parentheses, but really, um, they should be hedging their bets on that one. But yeah, we are battling a Category 5 hurricane, and it should be fun. It's not going to go well, but uh, I have already tried this during the live stream, and I did not do well. We will see how it goes though. Maybe I'll be lucky, I don't know. I mean, it's probably not so much a matter of skill as a fortunate bounce <laughs> or a gust at this point. Okay, well... Uh, I'm gonna try and turn off the auto stuff there. It is still the fly-by-wire. But yeah, uh, well, I can zoom in on the panel and you can sort of see the wind speed there. Uh, basically 30 degrees anywhere from 60 to 120 knots, um, 110, 116 there you saw briefly. And the variance in the wind speed is impressive. And occasionally we uh, sort of get pushed down and so it's anything but steady. And we are going to have to turn to the left. I'll bring up the VFR map just to confirm because it doesn't have us lined up already or anything. We can sort of see the runway on the VFR map so we know we need to turn pretty substantially. In fact, uh, any plane would have turned by now. So I don't know why. They should start us a little bit earlier maybe if they want us to turn left here. I mean, you can see I only took a brief moment to take a look at the wind speed there, and we're way past. There's TB, uh, T, TBPB there. Okay, I think we can see the runway coming into view there. By the wind, we're gonna be pushed to the right, so we're gonna have to aim left by a lot. Though I expect that closer to the airport itself, the winds will be less at the surface right before we land, so we're going to have to correct for that again. We're very low right now, of course. Ground speed is only 113, 114, even though our true airspeed is anywhere from 160 to 210. <laughs> so... Uh, it's not jostling as much as the PC-6 because the PC-6 is a smaller plane. Okay, we seem to be on track now. For what that's worth, when gusts can toss us all over the place. We're still not very well lined up though. Okay, now we're lined up, but we still have to attack to the left. Oh, and we get serious dips. The wind has changed. We're going 30 to 50 knots right now, so it's weird. Ah, ah, okay. Uh, yeah, I landed nowhere near where we were supposed to. But we're stopping. Just be glad. <laughs> Just be glad we're stopping. 
Okay. We hopped a bit. We were off to the side. What does it say? Wow! 184! 184, folks. I'll definitely preserve that. That's... It's tough to get it into three, di three digits, you gotta admit. That takes effort. <laughs> I've had... Uh, during the live stream at a higher, but I uh, still got a C. So... Yeah. No. That one is hard. And I would love... I would love it if they posted leaderboards on it. Uh, but they don't. So we don't know how other people have done. Uh, it, I mean, that would obviously allow us to scale because even with the regular challenges, some of them people top out at 1.9 million, nearly as good as you can get because it's only 2 million points. Then sometimes they top out at 1.2 million, so it's obviously a harder challenge, but the measurement is still the same. Now, getting into three digits isn't going to get you anywhere, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So more work needs to be done. That's going to be... Um, I'll be insanely pleased with myself if I ever get that to an A. But uh, as a last thing, let's take a look at one of the presets. And we should try the PMDG DC6 in one of the presets since that is one plane that it doesn't have. And the DC6 is the closest plane I have. Maybe the, some of the two uh, propeller engine planes might be good. But I'll try the DC6 on a flight in one of the hurricanes, one of the preset hurricanes. I don't want, I, I don't know, I, I would like one that didn't do that much damage personally, right? I mean, but uh, they're all pretty horrible. The fictional ones I suppose would be best if for that. I mean, should we do this uh, Portland fictional hurricane? I don't know how strong it is, but there's this fictional one from JFK. That, that'll be scenic, I mean with Manhattan and everything. So let's uh, let's go with the fictional one so that we don't relive any any traumas or anything. I forget, maybe for the cargo version I had a special livery that uh, U US Department of Commerce might be good. Then I won't be risking any I mean I might not be risking passengers that way. Let's see, what what else did I have for DC six B? Anything that would be more appropriate? There are a lot of liveries, but these are all definitely passenger liveries. We'll go with the Department of Commerce, that makes some sense. That is, it, actually, it is a NOAA one. Okay, so that, that works perfectly. So this is a NOAA one, exactly what I want. Okay. Uh, KJFK. I probably downloaded that livery specifically for this purpose. Okay, well, the snow is with us. It is a snowy day, in addition to just being a hurricane. I'm gonna get some panel lights first. Alright, that should be good enough. Gus lock? I mean, maybe we need the gus lock. No. <laughs> just joking, calm down. Alright. Take a look outside. Our Department of Commerce Noah livery. Okay. We have no instruments to verify how strong things are. I don't think this is the heart of the hurricane here, though. It's not feeling like, uh, I mean, we can see there's wind, but it's not feeling that crazy. I don't know how strong a hurricane this Hurricane Auric is supposed to be, so... That visibility is non-existent. Maybe flying in New York is sort of pointless with this. We're certainly in it, but we're not getting jostled about or anything. There aren't any gusts. Well, we're at 5,000 feet and visibility is still what you see it as. Maybe once we get high enough, we'll see what the outline of this hurricane might- Oh, we just broke- Oh, there's the eye! Well, that's dramatic. I don't know. We weren't really getting tossed about that much, so... 
I'm confused. I was expecting higher gusts if... But maybe close to the eye... I, I would expect the, the speed is very high in the eye wall, right? Well, there's Manhattan over there. I mean, I suppose if they're gonna have, like, documentary-like tours of hurricanes in this package, they must know the structure of the hurricanes, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, no, oh, I mean, it's obviously calm right here. We'll, we'll go straight through and see if we get tossed about at some point. Maybe it's the outer arms that are more uh, dangerous. We'll see. This is a eerie, snowy sort of New York. I, I don't want the snow. Hold on a sec. Let's just... I mean, we have the preset, but I don't want the snow. I mean... Yeah. Does it, it doesn't really change it, though. Oh, there we go. Uh, we can have a little bit of snow. Uh, okay, we'll just leave it like that. I didn't want the snow. Doesn't there seem to be way too much greenery in New York right now? I may need to check that Bijan Hibashi tree pack. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot more greenery than I was expecting. There might be an update. There we go. I have a hurricane over Manhattan. Noah, the breeze, DC-6. And we're going to head right back into that hurricane and see how it goes. I want drama, darn it. Well, there's a fellow plane down there. Brings to mind the movie Castle in the Sky, which is one of the Studio Ghibli movies that I really like. And they have Laputa, the floating island, in the midst of basically a hurricane. In the eye of the hurricane. And... It'd be nice to have that, actually. I've seen some weird things, re weird mods for flight sim. Floating Island would be especially nifty in a way. A landable one, too, would be nice. With robots. Anyway, okay, back in we go. Um... I'll get the this map up because it'll show the wind speed as well. So we have 36 knots it says. I don't know if that's right or not for hurricanes. Once upon a time I knew. I should check my notes. I took a class on climate and there was quite a lot on hurricanes but it's been a while. We are all the way up at 12,000 feet though, so perhaps I should go down a little bit. I don't know what altitude is best for dramatic hurricane carnage. Oh, uh, I think we're out of it or, well there's some other clouds, but it doesn't seem like a very big storm then. Or maybe these are other rings. But it's not very fast, I didn't feel like. Let's see, let's let's go into one of the other rings. And definitely no gusting. I mean, if we set this, it says weather like this, but if we have that Will it automatically generate any of these, like, right in this location? I don't know. Oh, we'll wait until I go through this wall and then see. That, yeah, a little bit slow right now. Let's see how this next arm does. is what this situation looks like. That's a whole thing going on there. And here 
here we go again. Okay, yeah, it doesn't look like this is any better. Let, let me try one of the non-fictional presets and see if it'll generate that storm here. Sandy is reasonably appropriate, so we'll, we'll try to... Let's see what the Sandy seems like. No, it sort of clears it up. Um, I don't know whereabouts Sandy is. It says MUCU, which is, I guess, more like where Sandy initially was generated, perhaps. I'm not sure. Uh, that's certainly not around here. I do not see a Hurricane Sandy in the neighborhood. So, I don't know about these presets. I don't know how the presets work right. Um, we certainly had a what the, the physical, visible semblance of a hurricane, but we did not get hurricane-like activities from the preset. So, I don't know what that was about. Let me let me restore that preset and see what some of the numbers are. So is this Hurricane Auric? Then let's see. Uh, we've got wind layer here. That's just 15 knots there, and no gusts. There's this wind layer. That's 42, uh, 43.2 knots, and this one's 58. It's a pretty mild hurricane if it's only 58 knots. And that's all, all the way up there at 19,000 feet. And But the problem is there's no gusting, so it's a very... I, I don't even know if it's possible for something like a hurricane to not gust, but... Um, uh, yeah, we should have some gusts. Uh, maybe these weather presets need some work. So, anyway, I'll leave it at that. That has been my experience with the Storm plugin from SoFly. Sort of a mixed bag, it depends on what you want. Uh, again, I didn't try out the guided sort of tours that they have. They have audio missions and I didn't want to do that because then I'd be presenting the audio, which is basically what you're paying for. So, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.